Alright, in this one we're going to talk about how intersections work. The idea will be to uh, just go over the big picture, not to get into the nitty gritty details of the math. We'll do that in another one. So we'll assume that you already know the ray origin and the ray direction in world space. So you've already computed those values. So the basic idea behind intersection calculation is that you've got some sphere with a center point and a radius, R, and a center point, C. And you've got some ray, which kind of draw like that, and that ray has an origin and a direction. So the ray direction is the direction the ray is going, and the ray origin is where the ray started. And what you want to figure out is you want to figure out where the intersection is. if there is an intersection. Now in this particular drawing I've shown an intersection so you can tell that there's an intersection. But your intersection calculation code will need to check for whether or not an intersection exists as you go. And if an intersection does exist, it'll need to be able to figure out where that intersection is. As we do intersection calculations, we're going to take advantage of the parametric representation of the ray. That is, any position on the ray is equal to the ray origin plus the ray direction scaled by some value t. So if I give you a point on the ray, you can give me a value of t, which tells me how many multiples of the ray direction are needed to go from the ray origin to that point on the ray. So when we do our intersection calculation, before we figure out where the intersection is, we're going to figure out the value of t at the intersection. So once we know the value of t at the intersection, we can figure out where the intersection is, and we'll know where the intersection is in the world. So in the geometric um, version of intersection calculation, we start off with a sphere, the center, and a radius. I guess that's true of every version of intersection calculation. You've got your ray with a ray origin and a ray direction. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out the value of t at the point of closest approach. So this is the point at which the ray is the closest to the center of the sphere. At this point, you don't know if the ray hits the sphere or not, so you just call this the point of closest approach, or the point closest to the center of the sphere. And to get the uh, point of closest approach, we don't actually want the point of closest approach. What we want is the value of t at the point of closest approach. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to draw a vector which connects the ray origin with the center of the sphere. And we'll call that OC. Then we're going to project OC onto the ray direction. And that's going to give us the length of OC in terms of the ray direction. Another way to say that is it's going to give us the value of t at the point of closest approach. After we've figured out the point of closest approach, we're going to figure out this distance right here, figure out this distance right here, which is the value of t from where the ray hits the sphere, if it hits the sphere, to, where the, to the point of closest approach. And this is done by remembering that there's a right triangle formed by the vector that connects the center of the ray to the point of closest approach, which connects the point of closest approach to the intersection of point, and then connects the radius to the intersection point. We know the value of the radius. We don't know the distance between the point of closest approach and the ray itself. 